Let's do a little survey. Raise your hand if you have ever used a dating app like Bumble, Hinge, or Tinder. OK. Now, for those who have, keep your hand up if you have ever been asked if you were physically able to have sex by your matches within the five first messages. <laughs> Not many people, right? Well, whenever I have used dating apps, about 90% of my matches ask if I was able to have sex within the five first messages. Now, although I don't doubt the fact that I am such a catch, that guys on dating apps get the violent urge to make it slightly awkward and, let's be honest, inappropriate move, it has also happened to most of my disabled friends. And while some dating apps are known to be the place for awkward moves and being very direct about looking for an easy hookup, nobody would say these kind of things to a non-disabled person, right? I have mentioned these examples, but there are many other situations in which society has different expectations for disabled people. In French high schools, the best students are expected to go into a preparatory system for the top universities, such as the one we are standing in right now. However, when it was time for me to graduate, I realized that people had different expectations because they expected that my disability would be too much of an obstacle. And truth be told, it has been an obstacle. And it still is for millions of people on the planet. But it is an obstacle that we all contribute to build. And when I say all, I mean everyone, whether they are disabled or not. According to the World Health Organization, about 15% of the global population has a disability. Yet, disabled people are cruelly underrepresented in all domains, be it in higher education, in business, in films or books, or in advertisements. Let's take an example. In the 150 best rom-coms of all times, according to the Rotten Tomatoes website, none features a main love interest that has a visible disability. And let me tell you something. There is no way Julia Roberts would have bumped into Hugh Grant in Notting Hill if she was in a wheelchair. Because the pavements in West London are pretty inaccessible. And trust me, I have lived in London for a year. Instead, she probably would have needed to be on the road because she couldn't roll on the pavement, and they both would have died alone. End of the plot. That's much less interesting, right? This is an example of a prejudice people have about disability. Uh, but however, there, the, um, there are unfortunately more harmful misconceptions about disability. Over the past week, I have read two articles about a disabled person dating a non-disabled person. And while I love a wholesome love story, if nobody would make the headlines because they were dating a um, non-disabled person, right? Unless maybe that person was Prince Harry. So why is it considered an extraordinary event when somebody with a disability finds love, just like anyone would. Disabled people are just starting to be seen as regular co-workers and classmates, but they haven't quite made it to love interest status yet. My whole life, I've always been the nice girl, the good friend, never the potential girlfriend. People didn't expect me to be in a relationship because, let's be honest, I might be nice, I might be smart, 
and might be relatively attractive for someone in a wheelchair, but I do need someone to help me with a lot of things. And surely, to most, that means I can't live a fulfilled and active life. Think about the portrait of the ideal partner. Some people prefer dark hair over blonde hair. Others value humor over looks. But rarely will you hear someone say that their ideal partner is someone who requires help to cut their steak. We are not taught to consider disability issues, which leads us to assume odd things, like the fact that it's okay to ask me if I can have sex just after exchanging a few messages on a dating app. This is an example of a prejudice people have about disability. And although it irritated me at first, I have come to find it amusing by now. I simply consider it as an exercise to test my wit. So if you do ask, are you able to have sex? You're likely to get asked, are you? Unfortunately, there are, however, more harmful misconceptions about disability. Beliefs that are deeply embedded in many cultures due to the way disabled people have been and are still portrayed now. And I have experienced it firsthand. You see, I need the presence of a carer about 19 hours per day. This has never been an issue at work, school, or in my friendships, because although it can be annoying at times, my carer is only here to be my arms and legs, not my brain. However, I will still sometimes rely on friends, family, or my partner instead, so that we can get some privacy. However, I am always very careful about asking people for help, mainly because I want to be as independent as possible and do things on my own, but also because, well, between you and I, I have a constant fear about being a burden for the people around me. In my last romantic relationship, I realized that this fear I had was also a common misconception. From the day I met my ex, I was very clear about the fact that he was my boyfriend and not my care. Although we both knew that he would need to help me with a few things in order to get the privacy we needed, we found a way to work around things. However, I was still quite worried about the way his relatives would react to him dating a disabled girl. From the beginning of our relationship, his parents knew that I was in a wheelchair and they seemed to be okay with it. That is, until they met me in person. Obviously, there are varying degrees of disability. Even being in a wheelchair is a very vague term. And I suppose they hadn't realized how badly in a wheelchair I was. Before meeting me, all they knew about me was that I was living away from my home country and working, just like any other young graduate. Yet, after only sharing a short meal with me, they seemed to have me all figured out. They told their son that they didn't approve of our relationship, that I would become a burden for him, and that he would have to give up his job and hobbies to stay at home and care for me. Obviously, as he is now my ex, I guess you can imagine that didn't end so well. But this theme of being a burden is not just an issue with partners, but also with parents and family. In our everyday lives, 
the families of disabled people are often portrayed as saints because they're just so courageous and self-sacrificing for helping us. People only see the fact that a disability often requires physical care, but they don't see that disabled people do care for their relatives too, just in a different way. My mom might sometimes be the one getting me out of bed in the morning, but I am the one helping her when she gets through a midlife crisis or when she questions her career choices. People only see the fact that a disability prevents people from doing things instead of seeing what they really bring to the table. But the thing is, Disabled people also contribute to build the disability barrier. Like everyone, we are afraid to exit our comfort zone. And believe me, it is a very small zone. Because we also assume. Assume that we can be a burden for society. Assume that we are more disabled or less able than we really are because we don't believe we can do certain things. And how can we? We've never tried them. When I go out to party, I usually make sure that I'm with someone I'm close with because I don't like asking people for help. It makes me feel vulnerable. But over the years, I have realized that I need to ask rather than assume it will annoy this random stranger to help me grab a drink. My point is, disabled people need to feel comfortable to ask for help and dare to do things that non-disabled people do if they wish to. Things like go to university, aim for an executive job, or just go clubbing and find a random hookup. So if you have to take away one single thing from our encounter, let it be that you should try to be aware of your biases and to let go of your preconceived ideas about disability. And to my disabled peers, the same goes for you. So now that we have gotten a bit more intimate, let me really introduce myself. My name is Julie, I am 23, and I have spinal muscular atrophy, but you can call it SMA for short. What many people will see at first is that I use an electric wheelchair to get around, that I have weak arms and I cannot walk, or that I need a carer to use the bathroom. Many people will argue that I suffer from SMA, but I don't see it that way. Instead, here's what you really should know about me. I love traveling and I have lived alone in three different countries. I want to become a trader. I graduated in the top 5% of my undergrad class. I went to ski once and pretended I was an Olympic champion when really I almost peed my pants going down a blue slope. And my friends and sisters say I get a little bit cross-eyed when I'm drunk. So now that you've gotten to know me and you know, what is the first thing you would ask me if we met on a dating app? 